Page 50, Great Barrier Reef. Four sharps now. We're in the key of E major. Time to do the scale on E major and C sharp minor. Do them both. If you don't know them, learn them. One octave up and down. It's very important. I explain it all in those scale videos. 4-4 four, four time. Let's do it one hand at a time and see what we got going on here. Right hand first, you have this E chord. And second version. See the E chord is here. Just put the B on the bottom. One, two, three, four. If you want to, you can do a two. I, I'm not moving around. Two, three, five. I think that's fine. And then, and then here. Remember four sharps. What are the four sharps? Well, if you know the scale, you just play the notes in the scale. But it's an F sharp, a C sharp. The next one is a G sharp. See, the sharps are always in the same order. And then the fourth sharp is always the D sharp. Everything except the A sharp. It's, you got them all, except for that one. So in that third measure, it's here. And then a measure five, if you want. You can do a two, three, five, if you have big hands. It's tied. One and two and three. And just stay there if you're, if you're there. You can use the fingering in the book if your hands are small enough. That's fine. But otherwise, I'm going to use that. One and two. You almost have to do that. Otherwise, you got it, it doesn't work very well. But you, you, for the half note, if you can, do the one four. And then for measure seven, if you want, you can come back out. One and two and three. And if you want, on measure 9, 1, 3, 5, and then a 1, 2, 4 if you want, and you're ready for the next. Or 1, 3, 5 on all of them. It's like it was at the beginning. Let's go over to page 51 on measure 14. You're here. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and is tied otherwise they're all eighth notes. Right, or just tie the note. And then come down. And then measure 17. If you want, two, three, five. Because you can go from here to here. Here, if you want, it's up to you. And then an octave higher. And then on. I do one, two, four here on measure 19. Because here I can do one, two here. The fingering in the book is fine, but for, if you have big hands, I'm showing you a different fingering. It's one, two, five, and then go up an octave. And then here, second finger. Same as what we had before, it's an octave higher. So the next measure, cross over third finger, and then cross over again. F sharp, A, D sharp, and then an E, A, C sharp, and then they give you the bass clef. Well, that's nice of them. So you end on an E chord, a one chord. Left hand. Those are octave E's here. I mean, you could figure it out if you'd check it, but they're octave E's. Second measure, one and two. You have to hold the whole note down. One and two. For B's, just playing octaves, and then measure five G sharps, and hold the whole note down one and two, and then going on measure seven, one, and that's tied, and then on, it's one, two, three, and I recommend a two or a three for the quarter note B because you got an octave coming up, and this helps get you in position. So the measure seven, you're here. And then on measure eight, just reach down for a, a three or a two, so you're ready for that. Otherwise, you got to come from here to here. I don't recommend it. I know there's times we have to do that, but we don't have to do it here. Put the hands together. One, two, three, four. One and two. So you got to move the left hand up. Eighth notes are by themselves. Lift the left hand up. 
You gotta move anyway. Come up. Right there, the rhythm. Measure five. One and two and three and four and one and four. Go on. One and two. Go over to measure 14 on page 51. You're here. Now, you have a whole note here, so you hold it down. And again, left hand's two or one. The left hand is tight, so you hold it down. So again, measure 17 is one and two and three because even on beat three, everything's held down. You're not actually playing a note, a new note. You're holding down. One and two and three and four. One and two and four and one and two and three and four. And again, the left hand was tied. The left hand is tied. The last two measures. The eighth note E is by its, I mean the left hand, you're not holding that bottom down, the bottom E down. You lift it up. And now now it's tied. And then here. So you got some different rhythms going on in the hands that need to be worked out. Because this is a fairly slow piece, but it's it's still got to be no hesitations and it's got to be a steady beat. As far as articulation goes, it's all pretty much connected. I mean, you have some slur. If you're going to put in the slurs or feel the slurs, it's like on, on uh, measure three, the last two eighth notes. I would prefer to f feel like those are connected to the next one. To you have to lift up because it's the same note. Otherwise, I would feel like it's all slurred together. And all that's slurred together. So, I mean, to me, like a measure six, that whole measure to me is slurred together. Here, they. No. I, these, I, get where the phrases are. Learn, learn to hear the phrases in here and, and lift up between the phrases is what I'm suggesting. Pedal's going to cover it up anyway, but it's important that you feel it. So feel the phrases. You lift up even though you may not hear them. And then the dynamics, that applies to the right hand. The left hand needs to be pretty soft throughout this. So it's, we want to hear this. And when you get low, it's easier to drown out what you're doing. You have to play this really soft in the left hand. Then on measure five, you come up a little bit, just a little bit to moderately soft in the right hand. Keep the left hand very soft. And then measure seven and eight, you're going to crescendo up to moderately loud in the right hand. The left hand can come up to about soft, but keep it way under. Stay there until measure 14. Now we're going to start to crescendo up to loud. A measure 17. So you got three measures and you're not going very high. So maybe each measure you go a little bit here, moderately loud, sort of. Louder. Now loud. Save most of your crescendo for measure for the end of measure 16. Here. 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 There. That's really where the crescendo needs to be. And that's the right hand. The left hand can come up a little bit, but you just gotta stay down because this it's too easy to get loud and drown out the right hand so keep it out of the way even if you're loud now they're telling you crescendo poco a poco oh goody you're going to go up to very loud for the last measure so you're going to go from here to the last measure oh, that's a long time 
and you going from loud to very loud. Very loud is not twice as loud as loud. It's just up a little bit. Poco, poco means take your time with it, <laughs> little by little. You just do it gradually over a period of time. And when you get to major 21, that, the accented notes are actually going to be very loud in there because you're, you're just a hair above loud here. And then now come down and multi retardando means slow down a bunch. Now very loud. The left hand can come up a little bit more. We still want to hear the right hand. You have to experiment with these dynamics. You got to space it out. Otherwise, you'll be loud within a couple of beats. So you don't have to start getting louder right when the it says to. You can hold off a little bit. They don't always put those crescendos and those hairpin things exactly where they need to go. You have to get to know the music well enough and kind of an idea of what they want there. And then you'll have a better idea of how to crescendo and when and so forth. Speed-wise, well, this is like a procession. It's a very stately. They give you some metronome. I'll bet one, two, three, four, one, and two. Get to feeling it. Uh, fortunately, it's slow enough, so you got time to move your hands when you need to. Then they add pedal. Well, we really need pedal on this because it's very robust. We want lots of overtones, and we want it legato, and we need the pedal to help us connect all these chords. But we have to be careful with it because we don't want to smear it up too much, I hope. So for the most part, we're going to pedal it like they say to. It's overlapping pedal. If I do it exactly like they say to, it's this way. fairly well. The problem is on these slower pieces the audience has time to hear the mushiness. I mean you can smear notes and get away with it if they go by quick enough. You know, but when they're slow they got time to hear that. Hmm. So we have, might want to consider that. So I suggest for the most part, legato pedal it, like they say. But like on major three, I don't pedal the second beat. Here. And you don't really have to change the pedal on the third beat. You can... And it's... I lift up on the eighth note so I hear a rest. Major four, don't pedal the first beat. That way we don't hear that. And then you can hold it down for the rest of the measure. So really what I'm doing is I'm moving that little arrow forward one count and doing it on beat two. So it's here. And then go here and on measure six. I'm not pedaling measure two. Here, I mean, it's just one beat. You don't miss the overtones that much, I hope. But it doesn't, it doesn't smear that. And then going, and then at the bottom, they're fine the way they're doing it. Measure 15, I wouldn't pedal that at all. If you want, you pedal the accented note and only the note. And then you can. And now on measure 17, we're starting to build up and it's getting excited so we can handle a little more smearing here.
the pedal down there. come up together so you know when it gets more exciting and more you can smear it a little more yeah and if it's soft and delicate don't smear that and that's that's the atmosphere of the piece because some pieces are meant to be very misty and foggy I don't think this is really even though it's a barrier reef and you're underwater I don't think they want it too foggy was I could be wrong it's a personal thing I mean it's a, how do you want to interpret it if you want to be foggy and misty and that uh, Go for it. Ew. I like to play this with you very slowly. Well, it's slow anyway. To double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics they show in here. You can do all those dynamics yourself. Keep in mind we're not trying to perform it. We're just checking notes and rhythms. I'm going to try and pedal it as I suggested, but we'll see what happens. I'll give us four counts. One, two, ready, go. One, two,